of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption, hallelujah, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. I'll stop there. I preached on, I started my preaching last week with this Bible passage. But I was talking to the men that they are problem solvers. But you see, the Lord also brought me back to this message today in the light of the result of this referendum. I want you to understand and take note, hallelujah, of verse 21. He says, creation itself will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of who? The children of God. Amen. Amen. Creation. So if creation, the whole of creation, will be delivered into the glorious liberty of a children, but what about a nation? Amen. I'm telling you that our nation, our nation, will be delivered into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. Shall we pray that prayer? Father God, we pray that the United Kingdom will be delivered into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. Amen. I want us to understand that whatever happens in the United Kingdom Whatever happens in Europe, whatever happens in the world, the most important thing is that God is glorified as far as we, the Christians, are concerned. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because it doesn't matter how much fi financial prosperity there is. It doesn't matter how much things are convenient. It doesn't matter all those things. If God is not glorified, if God is not glorified, then it doesn't work in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you, can you speak a bit of English? You understand English? A bit. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, I pray for your son. Father, I pray that you will deliver in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Whatever it is, a problem, pain, whatever it is in his heart, body right now in his life, Father, let it come out in the name of yeah. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your son. You. Jesus, name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. That the word of God says that even creation, that means that every created thing, amen, everything that God created, everything that God created will be delivered from whatever is able to corrupt it. Please, can you pay attention to what I'm saying? I want to, you to have peace. When you look at United Kingdom, when you look at Europe, when you look at the world, you need to ask yourself, what did God create? Amen. When you look at the creation, you know that God created people. Amen. Amen. God created the land. God created all the resources. Do you understand what I'm saying? In every country, God created it. The earth is the Lord's and fullness thereof. Amen. Amen. God created all those things. But man is the one that created certain institutions and certain ways of relationship, certain ways of being together. Amen. Amen. And I want you to understand that whatever God created, and how he created cannot be corrupted. But what man does to what God creates can corrupt what God created. And but God will not allow his creation to suffer corruption. Amen. Amen. In so far as he will not allow his son, Jesus Christ, to suffer corruption. And God will not allow you to suffer corruption. Amen. God will not allow your nation to suffer corruption. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know who is right or who is wrong whether we are supposed to be in or out. But I can tell you for sure that what is going to happen will be for the betterment of this country in the name of Jesus. 
and what will happen will also be for the betterment of Europe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because God is not going to single United Kingdom out alone and leave Europe to destruction. Whatever. But it may, may not be obvious now. It may not be obvious in six months. But I can tell you in years to come, it will be obvious in the name of Jesus. I want you to understand when you go to Romans, I go to Romans 8 verse 28. And I just want you to hold on to that word. Because the word of God says that I will know, I will know that all things, Romans 8 28, that all things work together for good to those who are who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. Have you got that? We know that all things, that's Spanish and that's English. Have you, have you changed it? 828, please can we change that quickly? Romans 828. And we know that all things will work together for those who are called. Amen. Amen. Those who are called. And I know if a nation is called, all things will work together for them. Can I have a big amen to them? That if you are blessed by this country, United Kingdom, as I am blessed, as everybody wants to be blessed. Listen, if this country was not blessed, if it's not blessed, why do people want to come here? If it is not blessed above other nations, why are people coming here? If it is blessed below other nations, they go somewhere else. You understand what I'm saying? It is because God has a divine assignment a divine reason for choosing this country. That is why it is blessed the way it is blessed. Hallelujah. And so we believe that this nation is called. Amen. And our, our, our prayer is to call upon this nation to love God. Amen. That if this nation begins to love God, as God wants this nation to love him, they will be, everything will be good for them. Amen. 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 Because the word of God cannot be denied. All things will work together for good. For this nation, because it is a called out nation, in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So I want you to understand that we are standing here today at a historic moment for this country and for Europe and for the world. Amen. Because we can see that what we just made a simple decision. People just went and voted and the ripples are being felt all over the world. That very night, that very night, even in the Far East, all the financial institutions began to react to the simple decision of a small country. A small island nation. Amen. Amen. There, I can tell you and I say no disrespect and I will not call any name of any country. There are some countries that can make this kind of decision and nobody will blink an eyelid. Is that not true? In the whole of this world, there will be some countries who can decide to come out of a financial group and nobody will say anything. In fact, they'll probably say, good readers. But this country coughed. Amen. This country coughed and the whole world took notice. I want us to always pray for the peace and prosperity of the United Kingdom. Because one of God says, in its peace, we will have our peace. But I also believe that beyond that, in its peace, Europe will have its peace. Amen. amen. Can I have an amen to that? Amen. In its peace, the whole world will have peace. In the name of Jesus. I am not saying United Kingdom is better, but here I am, I'm here today. And you are here today. This is our nation. This is our country. Amen. amen. We have to be proud of this place. 
This place has given sanctuary to a lot of people. We continue to give sanctuary to more people that are coming. And therefore, we need to pray for his peace and his prosperity. But I pray that there shall be peace in this nation in the name of Jesus. That is what I'm waiting to hear. I have not heard it so far. Since Thursday, I have not heard of anybody that is standing on my side. Let us pray for the peace and prosperity of this nation. If you have heard it, tell me. Maybe I will go and look, listen to that room. TV station or radio station. Amen? Have we, have we, anybody? Anybody? What's going on? Our leaders to be standing and say, let us pray for the peace and prosperity of this nation. That all these things that are happening will work well for us. Amen? Amen. You see, whether we go back in, because we are definitely not out. I'm sure you know people are, are petitioning. Yes, it might work. Maybe this is just meant to be a wake-up call to our neighbors so that they don't, they, they, they take notice of who we really are. You know, let me give you an example. For those of you in work, if you're in your workplace and you're trying to get promotion and nobody's listening to you, what happens? You go and get a job somewhere else and instantly they tell you we'll dock your salary. Instantly they'll tell you we want to keep you. Because they can see that somebody else wants you. I'm not saying that is the reason why all this is happening. What I'm saying is that people are taking note of us. And I believe that if all things work together for good, for this nation, as a nation that has the love of Christ, if not now in past, our forefathers in this nation have sacrificed their lives for the love of Christ. Is that not true? The historical fathers of this nation, the ones who took Christianity all over the world, they sacrificed their lives. So there is the love of God is in this nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so let us be confident that all things will work for good. Hallelujah. Can I have a big amen to that? Amen. All things will work for good for this nation. Amen. So, but our position here is this. We as children of God have to see ourselves as the people who are supposed to react positively to every problem that happens. Amen. In fact, let me not use the word a problem. We are supposed to act positively to every challenge. And if you are looking for a title for this uh, preaching, I have not been on my mind yet, but you can say, uh, uh, the after the referendum. Just, you can just call it after the referendum. The title should be after the referendum. So what I'm saying to you, church, is this. That we need to position ourselves as a church, as Christians, as individuals, as fathers, as mothers, as workers, as business leaders, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as problem solvers. Amen. You're, you're supposed to position yourself in order to solve a problem. What of God says, Matthew 5 verse 13, Matthew 5, verse 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. Amen. You are the salt of the earth. Amen. So you and I, and every Christian out there who truly believes in God, supposed to be the salt that will, that will influence the direction of things. You are the one that's supposed to tell the people all is well. Amen. You are the one that's supposed to tell the people, have no fear. You are the one that's supposed to tell the people, trust in God, that God will solve all these things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are supposed to you want to tell the people that you will not lose out. No matter where we stand, if God with us is with us, nothing can be against us. Amen. I want you to understand that 
Jesus Christ says, I have come to destroy the works of the devil. First John 3 verse 8. He says, I have come to destroy the works of the enemy. That means I have come to destroy the works of the Antichrist. Amen. And I want you to understand that if we are in Christ, the Antichrist cannot move us into the wrong direction. And I have an event to that. If we are in Christ, if we are in Christ as a person, as a family, as a community, as a nation, nothing can move us out of the will of God. Nothing. John 10 verse 10. Jesus Christ says, the Antichrist or the thief has come to steal and to kill and to destroy. Amen. First John 10 verse 10. No, John 10 verse 10. The thief and I take that to be the Antichrist, does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So the Antichrist can destroy people. He can destroy nations. He can destroy their destinies. But we have Jesus, amen, amen. that says, I have come that you will have life and have abundant life. So I want us to be confident that no matter what happens, we will have life, amen. amen. Can I have an amen to that? We will have life. We will have life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, there are problems that we need to solve. But what is important is for us not to lose our quality. Let me take you back to Matthew 5, verse 13. Matthew 5, 5, verse 13. Jesus Christ says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Then it becomes good for nothing and is thrown out and is trampled on that food by men. Therefore, if we are meant to be the salt that's supposed to bring a focus, that's supposed to bring a direction back into the confusion that may be going on around us, we cannot afford to lose our our taste. Amen. Our quality. You understand what I'm saying? That every Christian should stand more in faith. Amen. Every church is supposed to stand more in faith. Every church is supposed to be praying for the leaders who will emerge. Yes, our prime minister has resigned, but there will be other leaders. Amen. And we are praying that the leaders will have the vision to do the right thing. Amen. So that at the end of the day, when we look back in a year's time, we will thank God that we sent out. Even though we sent out, we may have sent out in order to come back in, or we stay out to stay out. It doesn't matter to me what is important that we will see that God is in it. Amen. And this nation, and even the whole of Europe, is refocused because of this decision. I just thank the Lord. For his grace. What of God says in verse 14, Matthew 5 14, he says, You are the light of the world. Amen. That means I take that to mean that the church is the light of the world. Amen. The church supposed to be and is the light of this nation. The church supposed to be and is the light of Europe. And is the church supposed to show the direction. Christians are supposed to say to the political leaders, don't worry, go this way. I believe the church has a role to play. And you and I have a role to play. What of God says, Matthew 9 verse 6, Jesus Christ says, I want you to know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. You know what that means? Are you there? Matthew 9, verse 6. That means that Jesus Christ has the power on earth to correct mistakes. Amen. So for anyone who's thinking that 
we have made a mistake by voting the way we did. Ask Jesus Christ to correct it. Amen. He, will, he can do it. He can do it. He has the power. He has the power to correct mistakes. So if we have been misled, if we have done the wrong thing, he has the power. Amen. Amen. He can say to us again, arise, nation. Go back to your position. You know he can do that. Do you believe that? He can do it. And he can say to you, stay where you are. Because it is my will for you. We just have to trust in him. We just have to trust in him to lead us right. Again, in Matthew 18 verse 11, Matthew 18 verse 11, what of God says, for the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. You hear that? That means Christ and his children and his church has come to save that which was lost. Let us pray that Christ will save our nation. Amen. You have to say a better amen than that. Amen. Shall we pray that Christ will save our nation? Father God, save our nation. Lord Jesus, save this nation. In the name of Jesus. My belief is this. That wherever we have missed it. We could have missed it 30 years ago. We could have missed it 10 years ago. We may have been walking in the wrong direction all this time. We have been walking in a, in a faithless direction, in a godless direction, whatever direction we have been walking in. Jesus Christ can save us. He says, I have come to save that which was lost. So if anybody believes that somehow this nation has lost its, its, its direction, and some feel strongly that this nation should have the ability to make its own decision. If you have lost that, Jesus Christ can restore it. Amen. And for some of us who also believe that maybe we've lost our spiritual direction. Amen. If you've lost your direction in one way, you are lost. You may not be as lost as you think. Some people may be completely confused and totally lost. Some may have just misdirected themselves by a few steps or a few miles. But nonetheless, you are still lost. But we believe that Jesus Christ or the Church of Christ can recover this nation. Amen. Amen. So we must continue to pray that somehow in all of this confusion that is going on, that the church should remain focused. Church of Christ. That the church of Christ should remain directed. Amen. And we will see the hand of God redirecting. So when I when I look at what all the Christian, all the not Christian, what all the European or other European nations have been doing, it just almost sounds to me from my own simple way of looking at it. I'm not a politician, neither am I a technocrat or bureaucrat or whatever you call it. So I simply don't understand all these things about all the advantages of business and all that stuff. But it seems to me that it's like a bunch of children who are playing together. You understand that? And then one of them says, I don't want you to play with my toy. I want to take my toy back. And everybody says, fine, we don't want to play with you anymore. You can go home. You know that happens. There's somebody who, who made a, a beautiful song about that, about children playing. And somebody has a bicycle. And then after a while he says, no, I don't want you all to be riding my bicycle anymore. I want you to keep my bicycle for myself. I said, no, fine, you can keep your bicycle for yourself. We are not playing with you anymore. You know that song, don't you? That song has been playing in my mind all this time, just like that. You know, even the Bible has something similar. 
If you go to Matthew 11, verse 16. Matthew 11, verse 16. Matthew 11, verse 16. It says, But to what shall I liken this generation? Are you there? But to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace, marketplaces, and calling to their companions, saying, We played the fruit for you. You did not dance to our tune. Then we decided to mourn for you, and you did not lament to our tune. They just want everybody to play to their tune. And so if one child says, no, I'm not dancing, say, fine, you can go. Oh, I'm not crying, fine, you can go. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what the Bible says. So I pray that the church in this nation and the church in all the nations will stand strong. Amen. Amen. And let the hand of God redirect. Everything that we are talking about are human institutions. If man made it this way. You know that the same man can make it that way. And it will work just as well. Amen. If man made it one way, the same man can make it another way. It just has to be, everybody just has to agree. So I believe that what can make man to agree with each other is God. Father God, have your way. Let us pray. Father God, have your way. Lord Jesus, have your way. We believe that you created all mankind. We believe that you created all nations. You made all nations. You set them in their places. Lord, you set a time and place. You are God of time and you are God of season. You are God of time and you are God of season. You know the time and season that we are in. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you give wisdom to the wise. Lord, I pray that you give wisdom to the wise of all these nations. Father, I pray that you reveal deep and secret things and shine the light into the darkness, O oh God, so that our leaders will make the right decision. So that our leaders will not take us into error. If our leaders have taken us into error, Lord, we pray that you open their eyes and our eyes so that we do, we do not go further into error. Lord, have your way. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Last week, I said to you, I made a statement. If you're here in church, you'll remember. I said, each man will be remembered for two things. Were you here in church? When you were here in church, with you? I said, each man will be remembered for two things. The problems he solved and the problems he created. Each man each man or woman will be remembered for two things. You know our own dear Prime Minister, people are already seeing he will be remembered as the man who broke up this, this nation. Is that not true? It was on the news. People are already seeing, it's almost as if, <laughs> it was almost like a prophetic statement when I was preaching it last week. They're already saying that this man's legacy is that is the man that made this nation to break up or made Europe to break up? I pray that that will not be his legacy. Can we have an amen to that? You have to pray. He's a man, he's a leader. The word of God says, Pray for all your leaders. That will not be his legacy. In fact, do you know that it can be said about him that he's the man that that got the whole of Europe to start thinking right. 
Because he made a nation to say what they had in the bottom of their hearts. And that made every other nation to take note and correct things. It's possible. You know that. He gave us the choice. Some people say he took a gamble. But the word of God says that the heart of the king is what? The heart of the king is what is in the hand of the Lord. And he can turn it which way he wishes. I do not believe that the, the leader of a Christian nation that is full of spirit-filled and praying Christians that God will allow him to make a decision that will break that nation. Yes, we know in the time of the Old Testament, God has to take his people through a situation where their nations broke many times and went to bondage. But Christ didn't come then. Christ was not there then. Amen. Christ hadn't come. But for us, Christ had come. Amen. Christ has come. The word of God says that you hear wars and rumors of wars and all those things. But I believe that Christ will look after his own. So I just want us to have that confidence. This nation will not break up. You have to see an amen. amen. I said this nation will not break up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No matter what, it will not. Because there is a way. There is a way. And that way is the way of righteousness. That way is a way that the Holy Spirit can direct. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray this prayer. That Father, raise up for the United Kingdom a man or a woman that will do your way. Shall we pray that prayer? Just pray in your spirit and your heart. Because God said of David the king, He said of him, I have found Acts 13, verse 22. Acts 13, verse 22. What of God says, And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Father, I pray that you will raise up for us leaders in this country who will do your will. Because we believe that your will will never take us in the wrong direction. Hallelujah. But I raise up for us the sort of man that you will say is a man after my own heart. Lord, raise up men and women in this nation who will be people after your heart, people in leadership, who will steer us in the right direction, who will stand and fight for this nation according to the will of God. And also in the other 27 nations or more in Europe, raise up God-fearing men and women who will recognize the will of God, where all nations will walk together and live in peace. Thank you, Father. We need to ask God to raise up problem solvers. Amen. Last week, I charged the men in the house to become problem solvers. But we didn't know we were going to have this problem to solve, did we know? We didn't think that. In fact, so, for, so some people who wanted out, they didn't think that all this commotion would take place. And so a lot of people who wanted out are now confused. There's a man in the interview who said, I didn't know it would be like this. I am I, I, now maybe regretting. It's not that he didn't know what he wanted, but he didn't know the ferocity. 
And some people are saying that this, this uh, project fear has now become project reality. That all these things they were predicting is going to come to pass. But nonetheless, it is still the word of a man. Hallelujah. If God does not allow it, it will not come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, if God does not allow it, if God does not allow any of these negative things that they are saying, I say it will not come to pass. Can I have an to that? Amen. It will not come to pass. Amen. I want you to understand that as a church, as a nation, we need to be more prayerful. Because in the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, you remember the Bible? The time of Daniel, there was a king who had a dream and he couldn't interpret the dream. And he didn't tell anybody the dream. But God raised Daniel who could show him the meaning of the dream and the dream was not just about the king's kingdom, it was about the future. Who knows the future? Nobody knows the future. But our God does. Amen. Amen. Our God does. So I want you to understand that God can see where we cannot see. So have confidence. Amen. Amen. So I will pray this prayer. Ephesians 1 verse 17. Ephesians 1 verse 17. The word of God says, Let us pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to us the spirit of wisdom, and revelation in the knowledge of him, so that our eyes of understanding will be enlightened. Hallelujah. And we know what is the hope of his calling upon ourselves, upon this nation, upon this world. And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the same? Let us pray. Father God, you are the Lord of wisdom. You are the God of understanding. Open our eyes of understanding. Let us be enlightened. Pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Father, open the eyes of our leaders. Open the eyes of this nation. Let us see what you are seeing. Let us act in the way that you have preordained for us. In the name of Jesus. Let your will be established, O God. Father God, let your will be established in this nation. And in Europe and in the world. Let us have faith. Amen. Let us have faith. Finally, the Word of God tells us that God used David. Amen. To solve a problem. His problem was called Goliath. You know about David and Goliath? The problem was called Goliath, who was from the Philistines, and he was determined to destroy the army of the Lord. But God used somebody who was not known to solve the problem. Shall we pray that Father raise up for us in this nation a light of David who will stand who will lead who will go ahead of us and who will solve this big problem that people are raising up. The problem was not solved with the blood of the people of Israel. No. The, it was solved by destroying the problem. Father, destroy every gigantic problem. The Lord will solve this problem by making a solution available. Amen. There's nothing that can solve problems more than the love of God. When people love God, then they love each other. I 
Pray that that will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Very quickly, just two minutes. You see, when David became the problem solver, you know, he was not even in the picture. You know the story, I don't want to go there. He was minding in his own business somewhere. Let us pray that, Father, the person you are going to raise, he may not even be a politician right now. He may not even be somebody that we all know, but somebody who has wisdom, who the Lord will use. Raise him up. Bring him out of the wilderness. Tell Father, Father God, bring those people out of the wilderness. Whatever you have been keeping them for a time as this, Father, bring them out so that they will hear. Let them not ignore the problem. Father God, let not them not ignore. Let them not say it doesn't concern me. Lord, I pray, bring them out. Let them signify their intention. Let them say vocally, I can solve this problem. I have a solution to what is going on right now. Father, bring out your Davids. You know what David did? When David first came out, you know, people antagonized him. His brothers antagonized him. They said he was a troublemaker. He was supposed to be minding the sheep, not coming to fight the battle. He was not a soldier. But he didn't listen to them. He kept speaking out. So, Father, the people that you're going to use who have the understanding, they may be the youths, they may be the young people, whoever they are, Father, raise them up now in the name of Jesus. Make them have the confidence to keep speaking and keep speaking until their voice is recognized. Hallelujah. David didn't keep his mouth shut. He kept speaking. He kept speaking until they took him to the king. And he said, I can solve this problem. I have a solution for this. Father God, raise up the young. Raise up the old. Yes, raise up the women. Raise up the men. Whoever it is. Father, give them a voice. Let us say, Father, give the people who can solve them. Give them a voice. Give them a voice. Give them a voice. Give them a voice. This is our nation. Give them a voice. Who will come out and say, we can solve this problem. Let them be recognized. Thank you, Father. Finally, what happened, you know, when David solved the problem? As an individual, the rest of the army of the children of Israel rushed at the problem and they solved their own part. They played their own part. Amen. Amen. You know, one man cannot do it. There has to be an army of people. The whole nation has to rise up behind whoever God leads. Amen. Let us pray that Father God, let this nation be united. Let the nation unite around the leaders who will be the problem solvers. The ones who will solve this problem. Father, let the whole nation arise. Let the whole nation arise with them. Let us take their leadership seriously. Give us the right people and let the nation support them in order to solve this problem. We are not prescribing a solution because you are the only one who has a solution. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, the last prayer. When David killed Goliath and the children of Israel rushed in and defeated the enemy, then they all took the spoils of war home. You understand that David did not say, I was the one who won this battle. Give me everything. I want to claim everything. If I he took nothing, but he took glory, but he was humble. We are going to pray that, Father, when this problem is solved, let the correct bandwagon effect happen. That is, let other people benefit from the solution. It may be another country that will see how Britain solved this solution and says we also want that solution. Let no other country be deprived of the solution. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Because if something good comes out of this, you want it to happen in every nation in Europe. Amen. To have the goodness. So we, we should not say to other nations, we have paid the price to find a solution. You should go and pay your price. No. One price is enough. Amen. I say one price is enough. So let's say, Father, make us humble. But also allow every nation that, this, that wishes to benefit from the solutions that they come, let them also benefit. 
So that at the end of the day, let there be peace and prosperity in Europe. Let there be peace and prosperity in Europe. Father, we just thank you. Can we just rise up? Let us thank the Almighty Father. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise for this word that you have given us. I feel so encouraged because honestly, I can tell you that even before I bring this message, I've been feeling confused. I'm not going to tell you which I voted because we are on online. But the point is, I was under so much pressure by people who were crying, some people were so upset, some people couldn't control themselves, you know, because this is not the result they wanted. But I know that God is in control. So, Father, we just thank you. We glorify your holy name. Father, take control of this nation, United Kingdom. Take control of Europe. Take control of the world affairs in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let there be peace. Let peace and prosperity be restored. Father, let peace and prosperity be restored. Every place that has lost money because of the crashes, Father, let it be recovered in the name of Jesus. Father, let your will be established. Father, let wisdom let wisdom come back. Let the wisdom of the Lord come back into the nations. Let the direction of the Lord come back into the nations in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name we, we pray. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, it will be well. Say, it will be well. Say, it will be well. You understand that? It will be well. Say to her, it is well. It will be 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 well. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Thank you, Father. God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we be seated, please? Just a quick announcement. Please can we take our us off the live stream? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on behalf of Pastor.